next year, new will be in the vocabulary of the Pittsburgh Steelers as they will play in a brand new stadium. But today, they will say goodbye to their home of 30 years, Three River Stadium. It's the place where a defense called the Steel Curtain reigns supreme and where the most bizarre finish took place. When I think about Three Rivers, I think about Three Rivers being a great place. Remembering 1972, I could not believe how this town got behind the Pittsburgh Steelers. Everywhere you went, it was Steeler pride. It's down to one big play, fourth down and 10 yards to go. The Oakland Raiders have taken a 7-6 lead in a tough, tough football game. It's not going to end this way. It's, it's not going to end this way because it had been such a special season. We had never won anything in Pittsburgh. Bradshaw threw the ball. They all have it from Penn State. Came back in a play of always going to the ball. And there's a collision. And that gets cut out of the air. The ball is pulled in by Franco Harris. Get into the end zone. Get into the end zone. That's what my only thought was. And I got into the end zone. It just erupted. And from out of nowhere came Franco Harris. And I believe he was riding a white stallion. I got to get off the field. I got off the field. Then the referee goes over and he talks on the phone to someone. Not too many people know this, but when the referee called upstairs, I actually answered the phone. And I called, you know, and asked for uh, uh, Art McNally. And just, you know, I said, the referee wants to talk to you. He says, what does he want to talk to me about? He's got to make the call. They didn't have instant replay in those days. So how did you come out of the dugout with the telephone, you know, hang up the telephone, come out of the dugout and say touchdown? I still don't know to this day that answer. And yeah, we'll have to say this, that play was the thing that projected us into being the great team that uh, we became. After 31 years of thrills for Pittsburgh fans, the final game. Yes, the Steel Curtain, four Super Bowl champions, and so many memories for the fans of the black and gold who are being introduced right now. The Pittsburgh Steelers in their final game at home, but a critical game for them as well as for the visiting Washington Redskins who tangle here in week 16. And welcome back to Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. We have had a steady rain since about two hours before the game. Reports as a tight end and an eligible receiver for the Redskins, and they go again to Stephen Davis, and Davis running right into LeVon Kirkland. The 11. And this time the handoff to the bus and Jerome Bettis up the middle and gets about five or six yards before Sean Barber. Now Redskins on the Steeler 18 and here is a reverse to James Lynch, and he is tackled by Joey Porter who has been on about five tackles thus far but this is his biggest of the game getting thrashed for a nine yard loss on the end around stay as deep as the deepest guy don't bite inside it would have been easy to stay inside instead he saw it coming from the backside and you get depth he redirected could have got a little help from Jeff George there but he was able to avoid it and make the play he punts and this one is a low one and the kick very blocked as Miller gets it off and Deion Sanders picking it up at the 25 yard line and is dragged down Sanders had visions of a good return but a fine play made Get the, ball fast. the pitch to Stephen Davis on second and 15 and he is tripped up so it is an honor second down and nine the Steelers looking for the honor of the victory if they can get it and Cordell Stewart pass is complete to Bobby Shaw and the big play receiver, as you pointed out, makes a big one there into Redskin territory and a gain of 33 yards, and this gets the crowd going. Cordell Stewart, and because he was able to buy time with those legs, you can find Shaw back down inside. Deion Sanders has, was holding, holding him to the outside. Now, Deion sometimes has a propensity to drop coverage when they go inside, which he did right there. And 10 at the 34-yard line with two tight ends. And here is a reverse. And the going the other way is Hines Ward. And what a play. Don't know whether he had lived it or not, but in any event, it worked beautifully for the Steelers. Ward picking up 12 yards and out of bounds at the 22 of the Redskins. Nick, they had him dead to rights in the backfield. Mark Carrier ran right past him. 
They're going to try to see. Watch Carrier sees it. He's going to come watch. He runs. He's anticipating that he's going this way. Heinz Ward pulls a curly Howard. Just <laughs> goes to the other side and picks up a big first down. Opening moments of the second quarter. Pressure put on Stewart. He gets away from the defender. And there is Slash sliding for a first down just outside the 10-yard line. This is the same thing. The first time he took off, he used his feet. And he was able to buy some time. The second time, he just turned himself into a running back. This is really well done. Very well done. The matchup down the field, he couldn't get away. The receivers couldn't get away. And then, of course, he just takes off and runs. Now, 10 at the 32-yard line. Jeff George in a 3-3 game getting some time. And going deep down the sidelines. And the pass is intercepted by Dwayne Washington. That's being patient. Now you're going to try to do a, do a double move on Washington. He didn't bite. Yeah, you don't throw that ball. He's in the best possible position. So that one's on the quarterback. He had time. He tried to force the ball. It's not going to happen. Irving Fryer was the intended receiver for the Redskins, and that is the fifth interception for Washington, who leads the team in that department. So again, two tight ends for the Steelers. Darrell Bettis straight ahead, and Bettis picks up about four. He had a second and drops six. down again. And Stewart's pass caught first down to Courtney Hawkins at the 42-yard line. And now it looks like Cordell Stewart is the more patient quarterback. And pushing number 48 is split wide left. And the pass is dumped off to Bettis. Bettis with running room gets to midfield into Redskin territory. And Jerome Bettis untouched goes out of bounds. Now you're going to see they're going to try to match things up inside. And then you run everybody off and you create that separation, that vertical separation. Roger Duffy just gets down there in open space. It looks like he's never been there before, but Bettis has been. Third down and 25, and the pass caught by Hines Ward. Joe Zelenka is the snapper. And there is Barnhart with a good kick from the end zone, and Hank Poteet on the return, rookie from the University of teams continue never before done in this stadium by a Steeler and next year the Steelers will be playing in that stadium as of yet unnamed but the new home for the Pittsburgh Steelers and it's going to be a, a stadium Matt that's going to be open in the end zone so you'll be able to see the skyline of Pittsburgh and the other thing is I, it's it's an open stadium period it's not a dome and Grant the former Viking head coach wouldn't have liked that and George's pass Tipped away by Chad Scott. Even third down and 10. And once again, Jeff George looking for a target. And the pass up the middle. And it is intercepted. Chad Scott picks this one off. Albert Connell, who did not start the game, lost the ball in a little wrestling match with Scott, who gets the second pick of the game for the Steelers. Scott, watch. Connell's going to come back to help him. And that's good. So he's going to run his route. Now watch him redirect, and he's going to come back to help. The ball's there. That's just a wrestling match won by Scott. That's just a matter of just, hey, give me the ball. Who wants it more? Scott wanted it more, so he got it. Looked like Connell had it, and Scott grabbed it away. So the fifth interception of the year for Scott joining Washington. Redskin 38-yard line. Cordell Stewart pump fake. And he's looking for a receiver. And he finally finds one. It's caught by Troy Edwards. And a first down. Before, Stewart's receivers did a good job of coming back and trying to get open so he could use this time here to find him. Steelers will take it. A first down on the 27. And the ball is fumbled. And Jerome Bettis alertly picks it up and gets something out of nothing. He picked up a couple. Those have all three of their timeouts remaining. Cordell Stewart with a quarterback draw. Gets to the 14-yard line, but that will be sufficient for a first down. And a good block by the Richard Huntley to allow Stewart to get the first. To get the first down. That's a good job of play calling, and it's well executed. Leading by a touchdown. Jerome Bettis 
Off the left side, still driving. And it takes about four Redskins to bring him down at the six-yard line, led by LeVar Arrington. Try to get the ball to him. Looks like a, obviously a passing situation with Bettis out of the game, second and goal. But it's a running play to Hudley, who scores. There you have it. Bettis comes out. They hand off to Hudley. And the Steelers, taking advantage of the interception by Scott, have up their lead. Flemister is in. Remember, they're running the inside traps. And here it comes again. Steven Davis up ahead. Fumbles. And the loose ball, and we're covered by the Steelers. So on the first play, Stephen Davis fumbles, forced by Dwayne Washington, and coughs it up. The Redskins story in microcosm right here all year long. Well, it was not even, it was just a hand. Van Olhoffen got his hand in there, and he just dropped the ball. And you could even see as he's running, he had both hands over the ball. Watch how he's going to try. See, Flemister gets, gets himself the block. Now watch, he's going to cover up with two hands. Just flopped away. <laughs> Third down and seven out of the shotgun. Pressure on Stewart. It's picked up, and the pass rolled, and the pass put in midfield by Bobby Shaw. Once again, Shaw open right down the middle. On the defense, number 78, throwing the quarterback down to the ground. 15 yards, first down. And they're going to mark it off after the catch, the 33-yard gain by Shaw. All those numbers. First down and Jerome Bettis off the left side, driving Matt Stevens back. Jerome Bettis is one of those guys, always has a smile on his face. He's pleasant to be around. He's approachable. He plays the game hard the way it's supposed to be. He can be physical, but when you get him off, he's always, he just loves. He, he, you just love the bust. You got to because he's a, he's a happy guy. Biggest memory that the fans have here. First down and the handoff to Stephen Davis. Not much there at the 49-yard line of the Steelers, trailing by two touchdowns. Play action for George, who falls down in the lane and is down. Cordell Stewart handing off to Jerome Bettis, getting good yardage upfield. And by Huntley as the Redskins turning it over three times. And here is Jerome Bettis breaking two, three tackles and wowing the crowd with a run out to the 35-yard line, getting 14 on the play before Mark Carrier winds up in his way. Well, this is just pure power. And, you know, we showed you miscues earlier about missed tackles, and we were being kind when it said six because there was three right there. To go in the third quarter, play action this time for Cordell yep, Stewart, yep, and yep. the pass is caught, and a first down to Hines Ward. So Ward... Having a big year, leading the Steelers in receiving. He's going to take away the options. And, you know, it's just, you're just letting things develop in front of you and then get on top of him. Third down and 14. Great point. As a penalty down, and so is Jeff George. Jason Gilden getting the sack. Looking to throw on first down and going underneath to Hines Ward, who gets a few extra yards. In Pittsburgh territory. So third and one, Bettis, first down, and attack on a lot more as he gets close to midfield. Greg Jones making the tackle. They needed one, they got nine from the bus. 11 at the 47 yard line. And here is Bettis. Jerome Bettis. Hard to bring down. Well, there is uh, Bettis with a speaking out on his own behalf, getting 22 yards to the 31-yard line before LeVar Arrington takes him down. And a few words after the play by Jerome. Watch Fanica 66, Wayne Gandy 72, Kreider right there in the hole. Beautifully done. Down today for Jerome Bettis and the handoff to Richard Huntley. Huntley will score the touchdown, showing his speed and drive, and gets into the end zone. A very impressive score. Great run. Great job of running through tackles and a, just a piteous job of tackling. Certain as far as return, but fourth and three for Brad Johnson. And the pass caught for the first down by Alexander. Steven Alexander loses the ball before he gets into the end zone. And it goes out of the end zone for what appears to be a touchback. Let's read the call. It is a touchback. It is a touchback. And that is another view of the Redskins season in microcosm. They have, we're headed into the end zone. Dick is the, uh, the personification of the Washington Redskins season right here. Puts his hand back to a good job of slapping that, that ball away from the backside. Jason Simmons 
Forced the fumble and it goes out of bounds. And is they've they've salvaged their season and they're playing pretty tough physical football. Third down and three. Cordell Stewart showing his arm straight. Pass caught by Mark Bruner and a first down. Going away from the play, going to his left, completing a 21-yarder to Bruner near midfield. This is a pretty cutsy throw. Sam Shade's right there. The difference is Sam Shade doesn't play the ball. He played the man. And Bruner, watch him. He's going to stay right on him. Now watch him turn. He's going to look back, and he plays the man instead of the ball. He just turns his head and stays with it. Through the air. Jerome Bettis back in the game and gets the ball. Jerome Bettis to the 31-yard line. Sam Shade on the tackle, and Bettis gets eight more. Uh, defense of the Washington Redskins. Over 100 yards more rushing than the Redskins. Bettis trying to drive toward the 100-yard mark. And we'll get a first down with first and 10 at the 28-yard line. Jerome Bettis needing one yard for 100 gets more than that. So Jerome Bettis with his seventh 100-yard game this season gets a standing ovation. And the crowd aware of it. This is a very savvy football city. And the Steelers, who had the first down before the play, they got about five on that one. That's 46 in his career. And the Redskins will use their second timeout right now. 46 100-yard career, 100-yard performances for the bus. Well, it is turned back. The look at Three River Stadium. And uh, that will be replaced by a stadium nearby, right on the left of Three Rivers. Twin Swan. First and 10 at the 23-yard line. And the ball slipped out of Brad Johnson's hand. That's still that's a live ball, Vic. And no whistle. Earl Holmes picked it up. Oh, no, you see that the officials threw the beanbag, and that's the Let's get it. It's a, fumble. a fumble. It slipped out of his hand. Brad Johnson. Yeah, that, that's a fumble. Ball's that's, out. That's a that ball's out all the way. Now the interesting thing is, Brad Johnson just stops. Yeah, that ball. <laughs> that he, ball was out. And he didn't even know where the ball was. And he. Great punt return by Hank Pote to 53 yards, which was the longest punt return ever here at Three Rivers Stadium by a Steeler player. And there is Pote, the rookie from Pittsburgh. Two touchdowns by Richard Huntley, and uh, the Pittsburgh Steeler fans in the stadium have they've always been great fans. They understand and love their Steelers. They understand football. They've had a lot to cheer about in the last 31 seasons, the last 30 years, and knowing Bill Cowher and his staff, they'll have a lot more to cheer about in the future. Well, he's a Pittsburgh native, so he knows what it's all about, and uh, no one has left the stadium because the drama for the fans here will only begin. And the handoff to Zeraway, and Zeraway is dragged down, and preventing the touchdown was Sam Shade. Well, fortunate to call the first play in this stadium and honored to call the last one, Matt, as the Steelers will win, stay alive. The Redskins, by losing, are eliminated from the playoff race. And the countdown. And the curtain that falls on Three River Stadium today is naturally a steel curtain. And the Pittsburgh Steelers defeat the Washington Redskins 24 to 3. We'll be back to wrap things up from Pittsburgh in just a moment.